Welcome to another Tech Help Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about the go to control command and how you can use it to move between different controls, specifically how you can use it to move between different controls on different forms and even subforms. In yesterday's video, we learned about the set focus command and how you can use it to move between different controls on the form that you're on. Well, it's not great for moving across multiple forms, but I want you to go watch this video first if you haven't yet, because today we're going to talk about some of the differences between set focus and go to control. So go watch this and then come on back. All right, go to control is another command you can use to move around on your access forms. There's a couple differences between go to control and set focus. Set focus is really better when you're working with controls on the form that you're on. And you have to reference the control and then say dot set focus, whereas go to control is string based. So you could say do command go to control and then give it the control name as a string. This has a lot of benefits. For example, you can pass that easily to a function. I'm going to do a whole separate video on that very soon. Go to control is also macro compatible There's a macro command for it. If you're using macros, which I almost never do. Again, different video, but today we're going to focus on how go to control works across multiple forms and subforms. All right, let's say you're on the customer form and when you open up the order form, you want the focus to go right to description. Yes, I know you can just take these two out of the tab order, make this stuff. I get it again. Hypothetically, let's say you want to put the focus here now with set focus. That will certainly work. And we learned about this yesterday, right? I can open up a form. And since I'm on that form, I can say uh, forms. You got to refer to the, its full name forms order F description dot set focus. And if you don't know how to refer to a value on a different form, go watch my value on an open form video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Okay. So you say forms order F description dot set focus. Awesome. Save it. Debug compile. Let's come back here, close it, open it, click, and it works. Works just fine. How would you do the same thing with go to control? Well, let me run this out because we're going to come back to this in a second. All right. You could also say now do command dot go to control description. And this will work because after the open form command, this form has focus. And go to control works with whatever object has focus, whatever form has focus. So now if I again, you can debug compile once in a while. All right. So now if I come back here and do it, it the same thing happens. It opens the form and goes to the control. You don't have to reference the full name of that form of that control. OK, now let's take our hypothetical a step further. Let's say instead of going here, I want the focus to go here to the quantity field on the subform inside of the order form, which is called order detail F, right? If you look at the design view, this subform control is called order detail F. Okay. Now, how would I get that to work from here? Well, you could come in here and say, let me run this one out too. All right. Actually, let's do that. Well, I'm going to keep these in here. So when the gold members download the database, you've got all those options. All right, you could say forms, order F, order detail F, because that's the subform, dot form, bang, quantity. All right, that's the full name of the field you want to go to, dot set focus. All right, and that's a valid command, All right? It'll compile and it will actually do its thing. But watch what happens. Here, let me save it. Come back over here, hit the button. It looks like it didn't work because the focus is still sitting on order ID. All right, but watch what happens if I tab. I'm going to tab, 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 tab. It's over there on is paid, tab the notes, tab one more time, and it'll move to the subform. And now notice it's on quantity. What happened? Well, set focus will move the focus around in a single form, but it won't move between forms, including subforms. So what you did was essentially you opened up the order form. So focus is on the order form. And then you said, Hey, I want to set the focus of the detail form to the quantity field, which it did. 
but it didn't move from this form to that one. So it moved the cursor inside this form there, but yet your cursor is still sitting up here for the active form. It, it doesn't change the active form. Does that make sense? Right? You could still navigate all through here in code using set focus, but if the focus, if the focus is sitting on this form, you're not going to see it at all. And you won't actually notice it until you tab down there. Okay, so how do we get around that? Well, we just use go to control and we can use it. We can chain commands together, which is actually much easier than this. This is a pain, right? I hate, it took me years to remember that kind of notation. All right, so here's how you do it. You open up the form. Now, the first thing you have to do is go to the subform. So do command dot go to control order detail F. All right, so now the focus is sitting on the subform. And if I just save it now and try it, watch what happens. Click, and it moved the focus to the subform. The first field in the subform, whoops, someone's beaming in. The first field in the subform is the first one that has tab, right, the tab order. Uh, so that is the first tab stop here is the hyperdrive, which is the product field. But now that we're in here, I can now issue another go to control and move over there. So... Right after this one, you just say do command dot go to control quantity or wherever you want to go inside that form. Save it, come back out here, close it, hit the button, and there you go. See how easy that is? This is something people ask me a lot. I see this question come up in the forums a lot. You know, how do I open a form and go to a subform, right, field? People that, you know, want to do that, especially if you're opening an existing order, right? If you had a thing over here with maybe a list of orders, or even on your customer form, right? You want to open up a customer, go to a specific record, and then go to a specific field. You can do that. Um, you can go from the subform back up to the top by just simply issuing another open form command. So you could come in here. Let's say you're in the subform, right? You could come down here and say do command dot open form order f. That'll jump back up to the parent form, and now do command dot go to control description. Let's say. So this will actually open the form, go to the subform, go to the quantity, go back to the parent form and go to the description. You can do all kinds of chaining like this, watch. And, oops, save changes, yes, and go. And we're back up on the description field. <laughs> now, I will say that it is slower to use um, do command go to control than it is to use set focus. We're talking milliseconds, but if you if you got a lot of commands, you got you know lots of steps, you might notice a lag. All right, so here's a quick comparison between set focus and go to control, right? You have to use a direct reference here, which is the control name dot set focus, whereas this is string based. Lots of benefits to this too. I'll be talking about this in, in the future in more videos. I do talk about this in my developer course. All right, performance is faster with set focus. If you're just, if you're just running around on a single form, I use set focus myself. I only, I only bother with go to control if I'm uh, working across multiple forms. Go to control also pairs well with go to record which allows you to move between records. I have another tech help video coming out on this soon, but I also do cover it in my full course. Subform navigation, yeah, you can do it, but again, like I mentioned, it won't move the form focus there, just the field focus on that form, okay? It's much, much easier with go to control. Cross form navigation, use with variables is easier because it's a string, okay? Error handling, do command go to control. Uh, it can be weird with error handling. Whereas with set focus, it like you know you can't do it. Uh, there's a macro here. Chaining actions are are uh, uh, supported. There are some weird things with uh, conditional formatting. Again, this I might do this in a future video. Sometimes moving the focus around with go to control, the conditional formatting gets weird. So that's one of those little glitches. So again, when to use each single form? Simple input validation, like I showed you in the last video. I use set focus. Complex forms, subform navigation, working across multiple forms, use go to control. And of course, if you want to learn more, I got tons and tons of access developer lessons on my website. I just finished developer 46. So there's lots and lots of stuff for you to learn. I cover lots of these scenarios. I use set focus and go to control extensively when and when not to use them. Like there can be problems if you try to move focus around. Sometimes it's better to set values in the background using SQL or a record set and then refresh the form than it is to jump around. Like when I first started programming in VBA, if I wanted to change a bunch of fields on a form, I would, you know, go
go to control first name, set that. Go to control last name, set that. Go to control address, set that. That's very inefficient, jumping around all these different fields. It's better to just open a record set, set everything in the background, and then requery the form, and it reloads all the data. So there's pros and cons of when to do each. I talk about all that in my developer classes. All right, so that's going to do it. I, I was planning on these fast tips videos being just a couple of minutes, but I see we're already over 10 minutes. So my fast tips are not turning into fast tips. They're turning into longer and more involved video. I should just made it a regular tech help video. Too late now. <laughs> so that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. 
Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.